Hello there, my very good friend, Sunny. Warm, welcoming, good afternoon. Is that how I say this? I can't remember. Uh, to you all. On this video, we're going to talk about those trucks, John Cena, Steve Austin, and what they really mean. An ex AW star confirms WWE talks. AEW have made a major new executive appointment. And a retired ROH legend on getting back in the ring. I'm Adam Wilborn. And that's how I typed the story to him, yeah. so don't blame me. I am Ron Burgundy. I read how it is written. This is the After News. All right, let's talk about the trucks. Yes, yes, um, yes. So there was obviously a lot of discussion uh, about this following Raw. There was a, yeah, Cody Rhodes and The Rock, that wonderful, wonderful uh, angle that closed Raw this week. There was a big truck in the background looming large. Who was on the truck? Juan Cena <laughs> and Stephen Stone Cold Austin, yeah. which is what we're going with today. They lingered on it for ages. Mm. It was there forever. And obviously, it, it led to a lot of people going, is this a tease? Uh, are, they, are they like trying to plant a seed here? Are they... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, foreshadowing. Foreshadowing, yeah. that's the one. Uh, that led to a bunch of people fantasy booking uh, like an Avengers uh, super team of Cena, Steve Austin, and and, and whoever else you want. Some uh, people had already booked it on podcast, I've heard. I've heard that. Uh, running off the bloodline yeah. uh, in that tag match on night one or during the bloodline rules match on night two. That's why I want it. If that happens. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, I want the most overbooked match of all time. Oh, giving shenanigans out the years. But loads of people have fantasy booked that. In addition, there's some other trucks that have been spotted around. One has Charlotte Flair on it, who's obviously been out injured. Oh, yeah. Um, and, and Drew is on there. So, I mean, he's going to be there. <laughs> uh, but Charlotte's an interesting one because she's been gone for ages. Yeah. Uh, and then also another one, uh, a photo of a truck. One has Logan Paul on the back. One has Jey Uso. Uh, and then another has Seth the Chef. So maybe some kind of... I don't know, I don't know what, yeah. what the hell, freeway feud between these guys. Heat-flavoured prime? Jeez, none of that is real. Nope. None of just those words are real. Just a collection of words. You just made those up. <laughs> um, but WrestleVotes tweeted the following last night, and I think it's interesting. Great tweet this. And it's going to get people even more speculative, and that's what it's all about, baby. Uh, everything is done on purpose. Two weeks out from WrestleMania, the backdrop of these WrestleMania-specific trucks last night would have sufficed. I'll leave it at that. <gasps> Everything is done on purpose. There you go. I, I just, I think you're right. I think everyone's <laughs> right. I think it was not a coincidence yeah. that they went, we're going to shoot out here. I mean, they were, they made sure Cody's bus was in the right place at the end of the day. Like, I'm, it, it, at the end of the day, people saying, oh, well, what, 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 why were those two people on the, on the, the buses or on the coaches or whatever? Well, because they're two of the biggest stars to ever exist in WWE. But it also fits very nicely if you need someone to get rid of. So Jimmy's got rid of by Jay, of course. And then you've got Roman and Cody. And it's like, okay, well, who gets rid of Solo Sokoa? Well, the guy who Solo murdered mm -hmm. uh, the last time they faced each other and would get a huge pap and has said, I'm kind of free over WrestleMania weekend if you need anything. And then, of course... I just think it works so perfectly. He's doing the, 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 the he's got Cody down, he's gonna bloody screw him out the goddamn it. Hits one side of the ropes, hits one side of the ropes, glass shatters. I mean, we all explode in attendance. Yeah. And I, I yeah, I, I think the, the Charlotte one may just be, she's one of the most recognizable faces and it's WrestleMania, so put your face on the truck and the others are obviously all attending. Yeah, yeah. I do think, and, and maybe it's more hope than expectation, I do <clears> think that <throat> uh, Stone Cold and uh, Cena were placed there to foreshadow something. I hope yeah, so anyway. I agree. I don't necessarily think you need to look into the WrestleMania themed ones. No. Those being the ones that don't have Steve Austin and John Cena on them. But man, like this could be an all time great like sports entertainment silly fest. People are booking, obviously, uh, considering what's happened recently, The Rock eventually facing Cody Rhodes. Never mind that. What if we get Rock Austin 4 at Mania? <laughs> They could both work again. Jesus Christ. Okay, let's, let's How much go. money would you like, WWE? Because <laughs> I'll give you all of it. It'd be funny at so that So, bro, time. The Rock can finally prove that he's always been better than Stone Cold. Ooh. Like I always said in these last few months. Vindication! Well, the big debate yesterday was who's better, uh, The Rock or John Cena? I, for me, that's... That's not even a conversation for me, but Come maybe on, for younger fans who grew up when John Cena was the guy, maybe. Come it's on. More. Come on. I know. Where is he? Come on. There he is. Exactly. He's on the floor. <laughs> hey, what's this? Oh, I ah, forgot about this. I yeah. did it in the first story. And then the Time to chill, baby. Yeah. 
Oh, well, neither of us should. That's what you were going to do. It's always the new one culture goes down on day two of WrestleMania. We are the meat in your WrestleMania sandwich, and tickets are rapidly What if the viewers out. are vegan? You've really, they that's have, a really bad... Well, Underground Arts have fantastic vegan options on their menu. There you go. So there you go. We are the lettuce. Uh, Whatculture.com forward slash tickets is where you need to head, and you need to do it ASAP. It's payday for most people around the next few days. Do not wait, because we have got very limited tickets left for It's Always Sunny at What Culture. What? culture.com forward slash tickets is where you need to head absolutely uh, yeah cannot wait these live shows are the best thing oh. we do they're the most fun they're the most gratifying come along if Pe you've been waiting if you've been going oh I'll get a ticket later maybe maybe do it now because they will be gone people are asking if it's going to be streamed no you need to be there live in an attendance we'll probably film it and put some bits out but yeah. if you want to be for the whole the whole mania, thing this is, this is what makes <coughs> mania Never mind the two nights of WrestleMania. It's the boys. Boys, It's this. It's us. This is what makes it. It's your friends, your pals. And please come, because if we come, then we can do it more often. So Please subscribe. Anyway. Right, let's move on. And talk about an ex-AEW star who's confirmed talks with WWE. I'm talking about Mike Santana, Santana Ortiz. Awesome tag team, of course, in AEW. Things didn't exactly go their way. And subsequently, he has left the company. Uh, but he's appeared on friend of the channel's Chris Van Vliet's Insight podcast. Um, talking about, well, first of all, going to AEW in the first place. Saying that they did have conversations with WWE way back in 2019. Um... But And I'll read what he said here. When our contracts were coming up with TNA, there was interest with AW and WWE. We had spoken to WWE extensively, and they made it very hard for us to turn them down. But our thing was, Cody was the one who hired us right, and we already had anything before we'd spoken a while back. We'd given Cody our word before, and our word is everything. So by that point, they ask, have you signed anything? And we're like, no, but we gave our word, and we'd like to stick to that. I've got a lot of respect for him saying something like that. But he did confirm, did Mike Santana, that uh, subsequently they had more discussions with WWE since departing AEW, uh, or he in particular, I should say, has. He said, yeah, I've had Ortiz some... is still there. Yeah, Ortiz is still there. You're We're right. not releasing him. Uh, I've had some discussions. I've been very open with everybody. Right now, it's just going to be where I'm going to be able to grow the most. I don't want to be just another guy on the roster. I already did that. I want to be part of something. I want to do something special. Thankfully, I've been smart with money, and I'm not hurting. I'm taking my time with things. I just want to have fun. He's in a great position. He is good, good negotiating yeah. position for sure. Uh, anyone who's been watching uh, me talk about Santana and Ortiz knows my thoughts uh, on these guys. Uh, I'll summarize them. Uh, I love them. Uh, it's a real shame that they 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 fell out or they yeah. had this disagreement and it pulled them apart. Uh, I don't judge it because it's a personal situation and no. it's not mine to to cast aspersions. So I I like both of them individually as well. Saw both walking around like independent of one another in London before All In. Two of the coolest people yeah. I've ever seen in life. Just unbelievable. Uh, I like Santana a lot. I think he's extremely talented. I think he's a really underrated talker as well as being a good wrestler. Yeah. Um, I genuinely hope that wrestling uh, gives him what he wants mm -hmm. and that he gets what he wants out of all of this because it's clear that the AEW run did not they should have made them tag champs. I was going to say, one of the biggest missed opportunities, in my opinion, in AEW's history is not putting the tag titles on them. I, I, I think he talks a little bit more. Go and check out the brilliant interview with, with Chris um, uh, on, on the uh, uh, Insights channel because I'll swear he said that they were considered, AEW were considering yeah. putting the titles on them. Then was it an injury or something? Uh, I think it was when Santana's father passed away. Yes, that was probably uh, it. It was like early 2020. You're so right. They, they, they were going to put the belts on them, they had to take that time away, and then the plans changed. The when Page they, and Omega they put on it. Yeah, and what yeah. did those two guys ever do for <laughs> yeah. the free? Or, or the Young Bucks, for that matter. Uh, for, it's a joke. I think I think wherever Santana ends up, I think if he goes to TNA, he would be a huge star without that. Without, without Main pushing. eventer. Yeah, yeah. Straight, walk straight into that sort of role. I think he could do big things in WWE as well. And I think he's got a real point to prove off the back of this. And massive, I, massively. I, I like the fact he's, he's been smart with his money and he doesn't have to <laughs> rush into anything because, uh, yeah, that's what more wrestlers should, you know should what? do. Like, he, he said as well in the interview that he asked for his AEW release uh, before he got... Well, like, he was considering his release before he got injured. Um... It's probably good that he didn't get his release before he got injured because at least then he got paid for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff. So, like, I think he's he's probably pretty hungry right now and I'm looking forward to seeing what comes to this. Mm, so. Go and support him if you can. Legend. Let's go. Uh, right, AEW's made a new appointment. Big one. Oh, this I guy saw this. used to work for WWE. Now he's in AEW. He's the COO. We've already got a CEO. Now we've got a COO as well. 
Uh, this was confirmed yesterday by Tony Khan. Uh, it's Kosha Irby. Now, if that's a familiar name to you, it's because it was reported by Fightful that, that Kosha would be joining AEW uh, in this big high-level role. Uh, now it's finally been confirmed. Uh, so there you go. He is the COO now. He will be overseeing uh, strategic planning and execution of live events, marketing, finance, HR, licensing, consumer products, and other major lines of business for the company. He's not going to be that busy then. He's only, he's only <laughs> yeah. got one, two, like seven things to look after. Uh, you know, no idea what kind of impact people make behind the scenes because we're not there. Uh, but on screen, I think AEW has had a really, really good few months. Yeah, really great few months. Turned it around fact, in 2024. I've, yeah, I've been really locked into the product uh, since the Continental Classic, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've done a good job of restoring the feeling, yeah. as we say in the parlance of our times, and making it feel more like the product of old. Uh, a bit confused why they bring the rankings back and then ne just stop. That was weird. Um, bring them back, they're good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, good luck to Mr. Irby. I think it's a company on the rise again. A disgraceful appointment. No, I, I, no, like, I don't know. I don't, <laughs> behind the scenes, I have no knowledge about it. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be great. Uh, my main question is, you know when uh, you have to sign for things? I assume you sign A. Murray. A big squiggle. A. Yeah. Wilborn. Does this person write K. Dot Irby, and therefore is it Kirby signing for a package? That's my only question related to the story. Congratulations, good luck. I, we have no knowledge about anything else. There's no point speculating on this. Uh, could Kirby sign a package? Yeah, they, no, they look like they have fingers. <laughs> so is it? Oh, Kirby, will you ever be full? <laughs> right, let's talk Nigel McGuinness stepping back in the ring. Um, <laughs> A lot of talk about this yesterday as well. Um, he popped up on a Wrestling Weekly um, to talk about getting back in there. Uh, you may have noticed, eagle-eyed listeners and viewers may have noticed the occasional jibe towards one Brian Danielson. I think that's the match for all it in, It keeps it way. really low and subtle, yeah. doesn't he, like, <laughs> yeah. with these shots. It's really hard to interpret. But yeah. Well, here comes Brian Danielson, <coughs> slapping hands and kissing babies. What do you reckon, Nigel? What an asshole. Thanks, Nigel. He's a real piece of shit. Do you want to see that match at all, A hundred percent. Yeah, it's the one to do it. hundred percent. Yeah, like, I'm a Ring of Honor nerd. Yeah. Like, of course, I'm a freak. I want to see that match. Uh, but anyway, he talked uh, a little bit about this, well, not just this match, but him ever getting back in a wrestling ring, because for a while we thought that was going to be impossible. Yeah. Um, he said, all the time that I was in WWE, it was really difficult for me. I think of a lot of Lee. I don't want to say the jealousy and the bitterness, but those sort of emotions certainly existed between me and Brian and the success that he's had. When I was in WWE, seeing so many of my peers coming up and having that level of success and that level of fame and fortune was very difficult for me, certainly to sort of expect, especially when I could see Still wrestle today. I got in the ring last week and just felt perfectly okay. Awesome. Really great to hear that. Good. Uh, sometimes people say it's a lot easier if you choose yourself to quit, and I don't think that's the case. Um, <clears throat> I, I, a glimmer of, well, more than a glimmer of hope, this. I think the glimmer of hope came when he posted that picture of himself being ripped last summer. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like I said... Um, it's one of those things where I always we're always reticent here to say, oh, I really think so-and-so should have one more wrestling match because you don't know. You don't know if these people are suffering with something. And, and we, do, we do know with Nigel, but with certain people, you don't want to say, ah, what's going on? Why aren't you back in a wrestling ring? But it certainly seems he's giving signs now that it's feasible that he could get back in a wrestling ring. And I... I I, I think it would be one of the best long-term builds that AEW's had in ages. Yeah, because they do it literally every yes. week on, on Collision. Even if Danielson's not wrestling, Nigel's taking a little mm. shot at him. Like, it could be Sky Blue versus <laughs> Red <laughs> yeah. Velvet, and he'll find a way to reference Brian Danielson yeah. uh, to completely unrelated people. Uh, yeah, like, I'd love to see this. Uh, pro wrestling is for the freaks. This is one of the all-time freak rivalries because they do stuff like put each other's heads in the ring post unprotected and stuff. Obviously, I'm not advocating for that in 2024, mm -hmm. um, but if you're a sicko, uh, you know, you've yeah. watched those Ring of Honor matches from, from back in the day. I would love to see it. It would be a nice way to bring Nigel's story back yeah. around because he's had his troubles in wrestling, obviously, mm -hmm. and not getting into WWE and being made to retire and, oh. like, all of that stuff, but he's found his footing as a commentator uh, and a wonderful magician yes. as well. Uh, yeah, I saw yeah. him emasculating Will Ospreay in the man's own words. He loves it, man. God, if my arm's bruv! I love it, I love it. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Nigel. I, I do hope he, he's able to do this. We're spoiled as wrestling fans. We get dream matches left, right and centre all the time, particularly right now. And yet, 
imagine having a time machine and going back, I don't know, five years or whatever it may be, and saying, Brian Danielson and Nigel McGuinness are going to fight each other. You'd be like, neither of them are ever going to work again. So it's just a real fantastic bit of news that they both could feasibly Some work all in. Belter. I love it. What else would you like to see it all in? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you're wondering, hey, where the hell are the Twitter questions? They're on the video from earlier on today. Want to check it out? It's right here. It's unscripted. <laughs> just like the title of that one. Uh? Tony Bone. Bye. <laughs>